This is a crimper. These are DuPont terminals. The pitch is 2.54 millimeters, and the wires that you commonly can buy in a ribbon like this are 28 AWG, 28 gauge wires. This looks intimidating, but it's really easy to make these crimps. Pay attention to that shelf there. If you grab your wires and you remove the housing, you'll see this kind of assembly. And you can see right around here, is where the conductor copper stops. And right around here is where the insulation stops. Make your life easy by using the female terminal on the wire and the male terminals on the board. That means we're gonna crimp with the female. Before you use this tool, you should be asking yourself, for the love of God, do I really need this? Because parts like this come off the shelf in many different lengths. Parts like this offer you extensions for the most common actuators, like the Futaba style servos. This is the same crimp, by the way. If you're doing extremely quick and dirty prototyping and you're still using that solderless breadboard stuff, just keep in mind that the 22 wire gauge uh, single cord wire can do the job to offer you the male connections. These kits are nice, 22 gauge, or you can get a spool and you can come here you can use your 22 stripper and you're gonna get the same contact that's effective in plugging into these DuPont connectors. Why do we recommend the female to always go on the wire? Here's why. Your board is the element that you have control of. You can fasten that down to a piece of plastic or foam. The wires are the part that sling around. That means if you have male ends on your wires, you are just waiting for an opportunity to accidentally fry your components. Okay, if you absolutely must have a difficult life, then proceed to take three or four millimeters off of your insulation. Grab your crimpers, find that shelf at the top, and then hang up the wings on the shelf. You're gonna pull it towards you until it hangs up, and then we're just gonna go click, click, until it holds. Now, with the worst case scenario, you'll have some cheap wire that has approximately 30 something gauge that's advertised as 28. Feed it in just so that the insulation comes out to the wings. Can't see it too well. And then go for it. You're going to get two crimps. The, the long wings grab onto the insulation and the short wings grab onto the copper. Now we're gonna put the housing on. What? No, never do that. Grab a housing with the number of contacts that you need, not individual housings. You will not have mechanical integrity if you plug in your stuff to individual housings. And we're gonna push. Look, this one wasn't that great. Great example. This happens all too often. These wings get hung up on the back of the housing. You don't push it all the way in, but maybe you think that you have. You do the tug test and it, and it kinda gets stuck in there. So my goodness, here's the solution. Okay, grab a pointy object and take a look at these wires that you should have used instead. Wow, I really chose the difficult path. Okay, back to here. We go ahead and insert, first push. You're gonna make a tiny clearance. You're gonna insert the blade and lift. This is best if it's anchored on the table. Then slide it out. Now you're gonna ask yourself, well, what's wrong with this thing? All right, these wings are still too wide and the crimper couldn't do its job uh, tightly enough this time around. So we can squeeze these guys just enough. Maybe even do top to bottom, because that whole thing has to fit inside the housing. Oops, really hard to have this right in front of the camera. Now, we try again. The arrow means ground, so we put red in here. You hear that two clicks. The second click puts us right up to the housing. And now you do the tuck test and you're firmly secured. So that's how you use the crimper for DuPont connectors. 
and pay attention to the die. You're, we're using the frontmost die. These ones are for other crimps.